Do you love spy books, movies, and TV? Then the Spybrary podcast is for you. Since 2017, host Shane Whaley and Spybrary field agents around the world dispatch reviews and interviews with authors, historians, and fellow spy fans. We discuss everything from John le Carre, Len Dayton, Paul Vidic, Graham Greene, Nick Heron, Charles Cumming, Ben McIntyre, and many more. Spybrary is available on all good podcast apps and at spybrary.com. It's a brush pass, quick and simple. You are listening to Brush Pass on Spybrary. Quick reviews sent in by spy fans for spy fans. You'll face tomorrow by the Spanish novelist of note, Javier Marias. I say novelist of note because Marias has sold over 6 million copies of his works worldwide to date, in amongst which is this spy fiction trilogy, published between 2009 and 2017. I first became aware of Your Face Tomorrow due to its inclusion in an early Spybury podcast episode from 2018, featuring journalist Jake Kerridge's top 20 spy novels. It was ranked and rated highly, but almost mentioned in passing. I never heard of it before or since, not even in the maybe later category of the esteemed shipman list. But what was made clear by Jay was that this was not a conventional spy novel. It's off-road, scenic route stuff. Frankly, it seemed to be right up my strasse, so you'll face tomorrow warranted further investigation. The story is told in the first person by Jacques Dethard, a Spanish former academic who lives a lonely life in London, employed as a translator for the BBC. He is recently divorced and his conscience is haunted by an ex-wife and two young children left behind in Madrid. Dethard has maintained contact with his former mentor in Oxford University, a now retired Don and visiting regularly. The retired Don, a former spy with deep personal secrets of his own, recognises his young friend's latent ability to see beneath the surface of individuals, and massages Dethar's recruitment as a well-paid contractor into a small, nameless group based in a nameless building implied to be an annex of the domestic security service MI5. The group's sole purpose is to assess and analyse individuals of particular interest in personal interview and via clandestine and stock recorded footage. This is in order to predict their deep personality traits and behaviour according to circumstance. For example, in what circumstances would they kill someone? What will be their face tomorrow? Dethar receives his brief and guidance from the group's director, but has no other information beyond the sketches of his few colleagues and the principal subjects themselves. At this point, I hear you say, but is it any good? Well, there were times throughout the first half of the novel when I thought it was daring me to put it down. Solid slabs of prose, elongated sentences that last half a page or more, stream of consciousness stuff that seemed to go off on a kind of semi-stone tangent. It was almost like an unedited, unformatted manuscript. But the mechanism of untitled, unnumbered chapters had the strange effect of forcing me to concentrate where I was, a bit like using a map instead of a sat device on a journey. The second half of the novel, we fully enter espionage territory with a reference to text from Fleming's From Russia with Love, referring to the Trotskyite leader Andreas Nin's capture, torture and execution by Franco's fascists in the Spanish Civil War, an autobiographical subject close to the surface of both Jacques Dessin and his creator Javier Marias's hearts. 
open brackets, footnote. The vicious Francisca in Sarah Gaynham's The Stone Roses also took part in atrocities in that conflict, as well as Fleming's cruel creation, Rosa Clebb, close brackets. Another Easter egg is that on an early turning, nosy around the office, Jacques Dethard discovers a file on himself, along with other principal subjects, including John le Carré, Michael Caine, Margaret Hilda Thatcher, and a former chief of SIS, the Foreign Intelligence Service, who is still very much alive and for the purposes of this brush pass will remain nameless. So which spybrarians would dig it? You know what you like, and you like what you know. There's no kiss, kiss, bang, bang or travelogue here. It's poetic, cerebral, esoteric even. They're not quite a spy fiction Ulysses, but it is most definitely a modern spy novel. And I look forward to part two, entitled Dance and Dream. So concludes my brush pass of Javier Marias's Your Face Tomorrow, part one, Fever and Spear. I'm Andy Onyx, the author of the Barbell series of spy fiction novels. You can find me at andyonyx.co.uk. And until next time, Onyx out. Can you pull off a brush pass? Send in your review to shane at spybrary.com. For listening to the Spybrary podcast. You don't have to wait for the next episode. Join the conversation happening now at facebook.com/spybrary and on Twitter at spybrary. <laughs>